So here we are talking about Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 26, 1 through 24. We're talking about the voice of prophecy and how that fits for the church today. First of all, we found there was an alleged crime in verse 1 through 5. This is in chapter 26 of Jeremiah. And then the arrest took place in verses 7 through 9 and then the charge was in verse verses 10 and 11 and yesterday we looked at the plea in verse 12 through 15 today I want to look at the defense okay the defense now Jeremiah didn't lose his life he found it he found his life not by delivering himself from death but with the help of the advocates who took up his case look at verse 15. It says, be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourselves and on this city and on those who live in it. So here, again, is his defense. Listen, you do this and, and you're shedding innocent blood. Look at verse 16. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, this man should not be sentenced to death. He has spoken to us in the name of the Lord. Now, this turned into a pretty fickle kind of group of people, because <laughs> one second they're wanting to kill him, and all of a sudden now they get, um, they start to understand the truth. Now, uh, once again, uh, I mean, let, let's face it, if somebody says, hey, you're shedding innocent blood, you're going to have a second thought about that, right? Well, watch what happens. Some of the elders... Uh, of the land stepped forward and said to the entire assembly of the people and this is what they said and it it says Micah of Morasheth prophesied in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah he told all the people of Judah this is what the Lord Almighty says Zion will be plowed like a field Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble rubble the temple hill a mound overgrown with thickets and here's the key. The elders were quoting from Micah chapter 3 verse 12, which showed that some of them were very well versed in the Old Testament, right? They were now looking at another prophet that said the same thing as Jeremiah, and they're going, whoa, wait a minute, you guys, we can't kill this guy. Here Micah said the same thing. Uh, Look what uh, it said uh, about that in uh, Jeremiah chapter 26, verse 19. It says, did Hezekiah, king of Judah, or anyone else in Judah put him to death? Talking about Micah. Did not Hezekiah fear the Lord and seek his favor? And did not the Lord relent so that he did not bring the disaster he pronounced against them? We are about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. So you can see that this defense is taken up by some advocates that recognize in the Old Testament a another scripture they can find a case that says hey we can't do this amen so um, the next thing is the verdict let's go to the verdict so in the end Jeremiah was delivered from death he was acquitted of all the charges okay the verdict uh, uh, the verdict was a, was not certain until a Hakim son of uh, Saphan supported Jeremiah. Okay, so I want you to know Ahakam, A-H-I-K-A-M, and he's son of Shaphan, and again, he supported Jeremiah. And Shaphan was, uh, was the scribe who first read the book of the law when it was discovered during the reign of King Jehos, uh, 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 Je Je Josiah, okay? So, this man had three sons, and all three sons were godly men, and, and if you study their, their lives out, they actually changed history because they were godly men, they knew their Bibles, and they could minister to the leaders uh, of Judah. Once again, you might want to study that out. It's all there in, well, part of it's in Jeremiah chapter 36, and, um, and also in 39 verse 14. Okay? Um, wrongful death. Let's talk about a wrongful death. The words of the verdict in Jeremiah's case are bound to remind us of another prophet who was handed over to the people to be put to death. You know who that is. It's Jesus Christ. Same thing. When Jesus appeared before the Sanhedrin at his re uh, religious trial, two false witnesses came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. At his, re at his religious trial, the high priest stood up 
before them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is the testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remains silent. And then we also see in John chapter 19 verse 8, it's, uh, Pontius Pilate says, where did you come from? Well, we also know Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 says, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears in silence. So he did not open his mouth. Um, Matthew uh, chapter 16 verse 14 says this, uh, well it's, it's when Jesus said, but who do men say that I am? And they said, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah. So these two cases were kind of in parallel when you take a look at all of this and see how all of this fit together. So maybe this story in Jeremiah was really a precursor to exactly what was going to happen to Jesus Christ. So we're going to pick it up again tomorrow. Remember Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.